What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been using iOS 14.5 beta 6 all week and just as I do every Saturday, I wanted to give you guys an update on how the software has been running for me and also for you guys. So we're going to talk about the performance, the battery life, some bugs, bug fixes, some additional new features and changes and more. So as we talked about in my initial what's new video here on beta six, one of the main new features is this battery recalibration for the iPhone 11 series. And some people were kind of confused when I covered this. And basically all this is, is just a bug fix in the battery health section for the iPhone 11 series. So if you go to your settings and then to battery and then to battery health, you will see potentially this message right here. If you're on an iPhone 11, 11 pro or 11 pro max, because apparently those devices had bugs with the maximum capacity right here where it could show the wrong figure. So it could show you had higher maximum capacity than you really did or lower. So this update 14.5 and now in 14.5 beta six, this was included will now basically recalibrate your battery and it will give you a more accurate reading for the battery health on the iPhone 11 series. So I know some people were confused about that. Now I don't have an iPhone 11 with this bug. So I was not able to test this. I was not able to see this message on any of my iPhone 11s. So unfortunately I can't show you that, but this is exactly what it will look like based on Apple's you know, own support article right here, which I will leave this linked down in the description below if you want to read more about it. I also wanted to talk about the new Siri voices here in beta six. So in beta six, we did get two brand new Siri voices. So if we go to our settings, Siri and search, and then to Siri voice, if we're under American, voice two and voice three are brand new here in beta six. And I cannot remember the last time that we got a new Siri voice, if really ever, I'm not too sure, but these two are really nice. It's nice, a nice change to kind of have two new voices. So I've been going back and forth on voice two and three. I like them both definitely better than the previous defaults, the previous, you know, ones we've had forever. So let me just go ahead and give you guys more of an example of how they actually sound. What games are on today? I have results from multiple sports. Which one would you like? Baseball, basketball, cricket, football, golf, hockey, motorsports, soccer, or tennis. So that was the girl voice, the voice two, and then voice three is like this. Choose the voice you what games are on today? I have results from multiple sports. Which one would you like? Baseball, basketball, cricket, football, golf, hockey, motorsports, soccer, or tennis? So it's funny. They sound a little bit different there when they're saying those specific prompts, but it's actually really nice. I mean, even if I say something like, what time is it? It's 1.43 a.m. I don't know, it just makes me feel like I'm not using an iPhone for a short period of time. It's just really different and I've really been enjoying the new Siri voices. It really adds more character to the phone and really lets you choose which voice you want. So just having a male or female, you kind of get two different versions of a male and a female voice, which is nice. There's also a new feature inside of the Apple Maps application that now shows COVID-19 airport travel guidance. So this was an update over the air. This is available for all iOS versions, and it's also available on the Mac, on the Maps application on the Mac. This has nothing to do with beta six, but this was just recently added to Apple Maps. Another new thing added over the air that has nothing to do with the iOS version are 30 new games to the Apple Arcade service. So if you guys are subscribed to Apple Arcade, you now have 30 additional games, which brings the total to over 180 games that you have access to for $5 a month. So some of these new games include NBA 2K21, which actually looks really fun. Also, another one that I'm really excited about is the Oregon Trail. So that is here now on Apple Arcade. You can see the original Oregon Trail, which is nice. You have Fantasian, which is a big popular one right there as well. All of these games are brand new here in Apple Arcade. So we got Monument Valley Plus right there, just some, you know, Batgammon Plus. A lot of these games got updated and some of them are brand new as well. So 30 new games added to Apple Arcade. Definitely something to check out if you are into gaming on your iPhone or iPad or even your Apple TV. And speaking of the App Store, the App Store is now rejecting applications using third-party SDKs that collect user data without consent. So this, of course, has to do with the new app tracking transparency feature. So if we go to our settings and to privacy and to tracking, this is the new feature here that's going to be enabled soon. It's grayed out right now, but basically applications are getting rejected if they don't have this in place. So this option or this feature here is going to give us the option to let applications track us across the web and inside of other applications. It's going to give us the option if we want to allow applications to do that 
or not to do that. So that alone should tell you that 14.5 is really right around the corner. And then one of the biggest bug fixes in beta five has been fixed in beta six. And that is on the lock screen. When you would be charging your phone, when you would unplug it from the charger, it would still show 100% charge right there on the lock screen, right underneath of the date. And that was a bug because it would show, first of all, that it was charging when it wasn't even plugged in. And also it would show the wrong value. It would show hundred percent, even if your battery was not at 100%. So that has been fixed here, confirmed here in beta six. I've not seen it one time. I've also not seen one person report on it. So thankfully that bug has been fixed as expected. It was a pretty easy one to fix up. So we have some new features and some bug fixes here in beta six. However, there are still some remaining bugs that I wanted to talk about. And the first one is here inside of the messages application. So time and time again, when I send a link inside of a text message an iMessage, it simply does not show the image. It does not generate any preview right there. It just shows this little Safari icon. You guys are familiar with that. You've probably seen that at some point in your life. And it does that frequently, like multiple times. And it doesn't matter if it's a tweet, if it's a website, the preview just simply does not populate on my end. Even on my Mac, it doesn't show up. So I'm not sure if it shows up for other people, but for me, it never shows the preview right there. And this happens, you know, probably 80% of the time. So the other 20% it works, but a lot of times it just simply doesn't work. And that is a bug here in beta six. It was also there in beta five. So hopefully the RC does fix that. And then I also had this bug the other day with airdrop. So in airdrop, everybody's contact would show up as double. So you can see there, everybody's showing up as double in my airdrop. And this happened both times. So I turned my phone in airplane mode and out of airplane mode, and it still showed everybody in airdrop twice. So that is a bug here in beta six as well. I'm not really sure why it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just kind of odd that everybody showed up double for airdrop when I was trying to send photos. And then also inside of the music application, when you press shuffle on a song or a playlist, you can see there, I thought this bug was fixed because sometimes it is fixed, but other times it's not. So you can see the first song there is not being able to be moved in the queue. There's no three lines right there indicating that you can move the song. And as you can see, you can't move it. You have to move the second song above it and then they both appear. So that is a bug here in beta six still that's been there since, I mean, I believe iOS 14.5 beta one and I reported it. I talked about it a lot in videos, but for some reason it's still not fixed. It doesn't happen every time now, whereas it did before, but it's still not completely fixed. And then of course the HomePod mini handoff is still too sensitive in my opinion. And also sometimes when I'm playing music, it's just so slow to play. Like when I go to the next song, especially if I'm playing on multiple HomePods at once, when I press next, it takes like a good five seconds to actually switch to the next song. So there's really some major lag in the music application when playing on home pods. And I notice it's mainly when you're playing on more than one home pod or home pod mini at a time. So hopefully we get that figured out and hopefully it's a more seamless experience in the future. And you could just, you know, press to the next song time and time again without there being lag because there's some pretty extreme lag right now when it comes to Apple music and playing on the home pods. Now, when it comes to the performance overall on beta six performance has been really good for me. I mean, I've used it on multiple devices, mainly my iPhone 12 pro my iPhone 12 here, and also my iPad pro 2020. I've used them every single day here on beta six and performance overall has been excellent. It's been pretty much the same as beta five, but we do have some additional bug fixes and pretty much all the bugs in beta six were also there in beta five. So there's really no additional new bugs. However, some of the bugs are still present here in beta six. But if we go to the Geekbench here, you can see I did actually run a Geekbench shortly after my initial Geekbench test. So this was the very first one I ran right here on, I believe, was it the 31st? Yeah, so you can see my first run here with the Geekbench on 14.5 beta six, got a 1584 and a 3863 versus a 1591 and a 4147 an hour later on the 31st. So you can see after everything ran through, that was the real score. And if we compare that to beta five, you can see it is stronger on the multi-core, but slightly lower on the single core. So we broke that 1596 streak that we had on, I believe the previous two betas, we had a 1596 on the single core. So overall though, performance feels pretty much the same as beta five, really no complaints. Once again, back to back to back A builds at the end of the build number is an A, which means we are very close to the final. That is usually, you know, the last stage before a G, a gold master or a release candidate, which is what I'm expecting to see next. So no complaints when it comes to performance and when it comes to battery life, it's pretty much the same deal. I mean, really no complaints when it comes to battery life. I don't see any difference from beta five here in beta six, which is a good thing because I had great battery life in beta five. And once again, I have good battery life here in beta six as well. 
really nothing at all to complain about there no battery drain or anything like that so now let's talk about what we can see next so coming up is going to be the week of the fifth and of course we do have easter on the fourth right here on sunday so happy easter to those who celebrate that but on the fifth right here, I would expect to see Apple release the RC build of iOS 14.5. Now, if it is in fact an RC build, that means that Apple could release that on really any day next week because the RCs sometimes come as late as a Friday. So it's really hard to say. I mean, usually Apple does stick with the Tuesday or Wednesday release. So the sixth or the seventh is probably still the most likely. However, I would not be surprised if we get it any day of the week i mean even later in the week probably later in the week than earlier but really who knows apple's going to do their own thing with the rc it could be any day next week and if that's the case i would expect to see the final on the week of the 12th most likely on the 13th which was my original prediction a while back and that could also be the day that we see an apple event or maybe products released via a press release from Apple. It's hard to say at this point. Now also iOS 14.4.1 stopped getting signed by Apple on Friday, April 2nd. So that is another indicator that a new iOS release is coming within the next two weeks, most likely within the next two weeks. And so that means that 14.4.1 is no longer being able to be restored to. So you cannot downgrade to 14.4.1 anymore. That leaves only 14.4.2 available to downgrade or upgrade to. And then finally, before we get out of here, let's go over the community poll. So this is what I do every single week. I ask you guys how this latest beta has been running for you. And you can see I asked here, how has iOS 14.5 beta 6 been running for you so far? And you can see within the last nine hours, I've got about 9,000 votes. So thank you to everybody who did vote in this. I know it does get kind of repetitive as you guys have mentioned, but I do like reading the comments. So I'm not necessarily as interested in the scores there, unless there's some drastic difference, which there isn't here. I'm more interested and you guys should be more interested as well in the comments on these polls. So let's go ahead and read through a couple of these to see how you guys are doing with beta six. So JRN here said that he's had a bug for a while now when asking Siri to turn off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, the connection turns off, then turns back on right away. So that's interesting. I've not actually tried that. Let me see if I could ask Siri to turn off Bluetooth and see what happens. Turn off Bluetooth. Okay, Bluetooth is now off. Okay, so my Bluetooth's off and mine remains off. So I don't have that bug. If you guys have that, let me know in a comment down below. So I asked here, have you guys noticed any battery life changes from beta four to beta six? And you can see people are saying a slight improvement, about a 30 minute improvement. Personally, I went from public beta four to six myself and it seems the exact same on the iPhone eight. Of course, we're always gonna have somebody saying it got much worse. Pretty good improvement, but most, most everybody is saying that the battery life did in fact get better, which is expected, especially for a sixth beta in my experience the best ios 14.5 beta until now most of the bugs i was facing in the previous beta has been fixed and the battery life in my iphone 11 has improved nothing to complain it can't wait for the rc build so yes vasco i feel the exact same way this is definitely the best build so far in my opinion as it should be you know obviously as betas go on they should get better especially by beta 6. so all bugs are gone on 10r hope the rc will come soon iPhone 11 Pro, it's running great and having good battery life. So really good to hear. Good battery life on the iPhone 11 there as well. Face unlock with Apple Watch and Bluetooth with AirPods is very buggy and intermittent. So interesting. I do know that the face unlock with Apple Watch has gotten much better in my opinion. And then Bluetooth with AirPods, really no bugs there for me. So not too sure if you guys were still having issues with that though. Let me know in a comment down below. So you can see here, m multiple people saying battery life is better and things like that. So if you guys want to read all the comments, you can. Again, I appreciate everybody who did leave a comment on these community polls. I really appreciate it. It really helps me and you guys as well understand kind of where everybody stands with the new software, the new beta software or the official software as well. I do those polls for official software as well. So anyways, guys, there we have it. That is iOS 14.5 beta six. That is my follow-up review on the software after using it all week. Hopefully next week we get the RC and maybe even some type of invite or some type of clue or some leak about the April event, or at least the products coming in April, maybe a press release, maybe it's an event. Who knows at this point, it's really hard to tell. So hopefully we get some type of news next week on that as well. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next iOS release or, you know, details on the next product coming from Apple as well. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.